next up on No Surprises. I actually really like, I really like that process, the week of the website process, because you're really making sure that everyone is on the right page, mm -hmm. which I believe is the most important thing. And there are no surprises. Yeah. <sighs> wow, Susan. <laughs> wow. Is she a designer? Just cut. We're done. We're done. Episode done. And <laughs> there. Oh, um, this is no like, surprises. Uh, Hi, I'm Mallory Lazic. And I'm Kelsey Gilbert Kreiling. And this is No Surprises a look inside the ambitious, joyful, and occasionally terrifying journey of running a web design agency. And we're back again. And this week, we are once again exploring our uh, project with 3PR. Um, and we have a very special guest with us today. Very special guest. Very a special guest. Incredible, delightful, newest addition to the Weekly website team, Susan Lee, coming to us from Hawaii. Yeah. And Hello. honestly, can you hear collective hearts breaking right now as we are all under <laughs> a blanket of snow in the city of Chicago? <laughs> I think it's nice though, because I felt like I was getting a little bit of like just thinking about you talking to us from Hawaii while I was getting in the car in my slushy boots, it made me feel sunnier inside. Oh yeah, actually, um, I, I think I'm going to get a collective eye roll on this, but just this morning I was thinking, I really need to live in a cold place. <laughs> I, I run hot, I'm always hot. And I'm always like, I need to be, in a place where there's tons of AC. If there's no AC, I'm not going there. So I'm I'm just like, I really, I just wanna live in a place where there's winter, which I think I'm gonna eat my words. Yeah, I mean, house swapping, you're happy to come here and say, please take my place. I was gonna say the same thing. We will <laughs> gladly swap that. with you. But I, I also think here's the, here's the catch about living in a cooler place because, you know, you and I share this, I am from Las Vegas. The weird thing about the Midwest is that in the wintertime, it's colder, great. But in the summertime, it is way less comfortable here because many places still do not have air conditioning. It's gotten right. better, but like, people have window units they don't have like mm -hmm. there's not full ac and i like feel like central that was a big transition for me when i moved here in the summer i was like what is wrong with this place it's so hot it's so wet <laughs> like why is it like this my dad's like well, okay you know, not in the desert so no yeah, you're right i can i you're... can relate to that uh, well when until I moved to Chicago... we can have the first ever um, week of the website winter classic reunion of all the developers. We have had Ooh. to unfortunately work remotely with each other. Um, and you got to be with us on this recent 3PR project that we're talking about today. Um, we do a little bit of, I don't know how unique it is, but when we onboard new developers to our team, we kind of talk them through the process and then we have them shadow a project so they can see how it unfolds. And then we have them do what's called a co-build where they work with usually me to build a website kind of as a, in a, in more of like an apprentice type role um, so that you feel like you have support. Um, and the first project that you got to work on was 3PR with Rachel, who was a very special client to us. But yeah, I figured we would just take some time today to talk about like the experience, what it felt like for you and um all that fun stuff sound good mel yeah well and susan has a great perspective that we were just talking about right so yeah. susan's new to our team and yes. so it's exciting to hear like oh unfiltered feedback how'd we do how do we do did we do good now <laughs> oh boy um, yeah maybe we'll this find is a good out. place to maybe this is a good place to start with like 
what did you expect going into the project and you know what did you ex experience actually doing it um <clears throat> i think my expectations were um i'm gonna just restart that sentence i so i came from like working in corporate for a really long time and I was used to things get being taken very seriously. Everything's very serious. So when I started at week of the website, I was still very much stuck in that mindset. So when I, when, what I expected is that it was going to be very serious, but when we went into it, it was incredibly fun and lighthearted. It's, it was still like, don't get me wrong. It was so very professional. Um, but it was, it totally exceeded my expectations. Yeah, I'm we're so like happy to hear that. <laughs> a business mullet, like business in the front, party in the back, you know? Like. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is perfect. Business wow. in the front, party in the back, it's, a business mullet. I can't trademarked. believe never it's trademarked really now. Yeah, I can't believe we've never really hit on that before, but I don't think that you're wrong. Right? No. <laughs> well, and I feel like this was a particularly um, cordial project because we knew Rachel from from past projects. I tried super hard to not make this feel like it was a very different project for us. And I think from my perspective, even though we are friendly with Rachel, it felt like it ran, you know, pretty similarly to how a core, like a, a you know, standard week of the website project would go. Um, how did it feel for you to be like taking feedback from Rachel or sharing your ideas with her? Like, what was that like doing that for the first time as a part of a week of the website team, especially having someone like me as your co-build person? Mm, I was, I was definitely a little nervous because I sensed that there was also a personal relationship um, and a history behind that relationship. And I really, I really just strive to, I would like, I want to make you proud. I want to make Rachel proud, but Rachel was just such a warm and friendly um, client. And, you know, she's, she's a warm and friendly person. And it was just so easy. She made it so easy. And you being there made it easy as well. I didn't feel like, I definitely felt like it was a true collaboration. And I didn't feel, um, I didn't feel overwhelmed by your presence. And I think that that was something that you had uh, mentioned in the beginning. Like, just let me know if I'm, if I'm stepping in too much which I really appreciated because I never felt like you were, but I really appreciated that you put that out there for me. Um, I can only say great things about this project. I, I am, I, and I am not, I'm not, you know, blowing smoke. Oh, but blow eyes. that smoke. Like, I love it. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I know you worked really hard though. Like I remember looking at, we, we've talked about this a little bit in some other episodes, but that Tuesday first look is this like real like moment of nervous energy I think for everyone because it's your favorite part it's your favorite part my favorite part mm -hmm. it's the hardest part but I think the first time you put something together and then you show the client it just requires like so much trust I think it requires so much vulnerability have you ever, have you been asked to do that before for a client on that quick of a turnaround? Like that, that had to like really trust, like tested your, your own confidence, your confidence mm -hmm. in the process. You're like, you know, this check on, did I absorb enough information going into that first view? Mm -hmm. Did any, was there anything specific like going through your head or anything that you thought about, or did you feel challenged by that? Cause I feel like that's kind of a unique part of our process. I haven't worked that quickly on a project ever. So it was a huge challenge for me 
And I'm very happy to have gone through that challenge. I think that if you had seen me on Monday night, I think it would have been a montage of just like, there's like this meme, there's this like meme rolling around on Instagram right now where it's like the person who's like dancing and feeling good, they're like cooking, like feeling good. And then all of a sudden they're like looking out the window, looking really sad. And I feel like I definitely, that was my Monday of just like putting this homepage together because I had so, so much of it I felt confident about. And I knew that I had so much support on this project and so much of my, <clears throat> excuse me, so much of my self-doubt was creeping in as well. And I just, um, I just, I never know, like I can feel really good about a project and you just never know how the client is going to receive it. And um, it just, you just can never predict that no matter no. how good you feel about something. <clears throat> no, it's true. It doesn't happen. Yeah. And like every single time in a project where someone's being like, Mel, what do you think? I'll be like, I love it. The client will be like, mm, I don't know. And I'm like, you know what? A good barometer is if I like it, the client might not like it. And, and that's just because like, you know, I don't know, everyone's got their opinions on it. It's super subjective and we have to be res responsive to that. Yeah, I, I will say, Susan, I having done this for as long as we have and for as many projects that I did before taking a step back from being in a development role, I wish I could tell you that that feeling goes away. But I think I think at this point, it is such a part of the process uh -huh. because Mallory Mallory's also right. Every time I'm like, the client is going to freaking love this. Like they are going to be, I'm obsessed. The team's obsessed. It, it usually goes over by like a lead balloon and, and Kelsey, that's the second that, time you've told me I'm right today. I just want to point that out. <laughs> I don't even, what was the first one about? Oh, your the plant. plant. Mallory's bringing a plant back to life that I hadn't given up for dead, but I was definitely like, Ooh, you, it was like dead. two shakes away from the trash can. Oh, <laughs> I no. never trashed it, but all I anyway, suggested was that sorry. we move it to the office for better light. Right. Anyway, we're getting off track. <laughs> But Sorry. I will see the plant. That, we'll we'll put a picture in the show notes. I think. Okay, that would be great. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that that I think that that feeling of is this good enough? To me, I think that that means you're still leaning into your curiosity on the project, mm -hmm. and I think on the days where we put work up that we're like, they're gonna love this no notes it's perfect i think what usually that means is we're building something that scratches an itch for us as a designer mm -hmm. but doesn't have as much to do with what the client wants and needs and i think that on the days where you're like i have worked so hard to try and understand what's asked of this project i hope i did it i hope i executed it to their you know, to what they are having in their, what they have in their heads. Mm -hmm. I think that's why that feeling still is there. And I think that's why it's good. Like we'll have times where folks are struggling through moments of creative friction with the client. And I always want to take that away from people. Cause I don't, I know it's not fun, but it is such a part of the process, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Susan, I'm curious. Um, <clears throat> Because of the way that we build a lot of times on our calls with the client. So we have these daily screen share calls, right? Um, I don't know if you're at this point yet, but a lot of our team members that start out with us on the development side, you know, you're leading the calls. Some of our team members grow so adept at being able to like talk through a client and then also build like and tweak things live on the call on the website. Mm -hmm. while the client's watching to kind of dial in some notes. I don't know if you've done that or if you've experienced that all, but we've been told that that is like really wildly different and a major departure for, for a lot of developers. Like just uh, designing while someone's watching. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done that. That was the first time I'd ever done that too. And there was a part of me that I was nervous that if, like, let's say a client was like, what if, you know, we just did this? What if we added like a little underline here? And if I tried to do it and I just didn't scope it right. And I'm, 
and I'm like live trying to do it. And I'm like, well, now I look like a fool. <laughs> now, I don't, now I look like I don't know what I'm doing. So that, I mean, I was worried about having like a moment like that, but it was, it was just, it, yeah, it wasn't like that at all. And it was a great departure for me because usually it's, I meet the client and I'm like, okay, like, you know, we have our little meeting and then I retreat to my cave for how many days. And then I reach back out to them <laughs> and they're like, oh, I did it, like, where have you been or whatever? Like, I mean, not like that, but it's kind of just like you do, you, it feels like you're hibernating and then you come back and you show them this website and you don't have to do like any live editing or anything like that. So I actually really like, I really like that process, the week of the website process, because you're really making sure that everyone is on the right page, mm -hmm. which I believe is the most important thing. And there are no surprises. Yeah. Oh. Wow, Susan. <laughs> wow. Is she a designer? Just cut. We're done. We're done. Episode done. And <laughs> there. Oh, um, there no surprises. Like, um, <laughs> there's a meme on the <laughs> internet, speaking of memes, where it's like this. I'm like, I pulled it up. You probably see, we'll probably put it in the show notes, but it's President Joe Biden walking upstairs to his yet, right? And it says like, he's walking fine. It says designing. And then he's falling up the stairs and it says designing while someone's watching, which is like oh. very much what it, I feel like it feels like when you're just kind of like, huh, like what if they see me doing something weird and messing something up? What if they see that it's too easy? I don't know. It just seems oh like. Oh my gosh. Yes, exactly. I think this is the, this is the, there's probably like, an actual fallacy around this like there's probably a name for it but I think that this is a situation in which we are all so deeply enmeshed in this work that we forget that the delta between your knowledge and the client's knowledge is like in many cases the Grand Canyon and that's not because they don't know what anything it's because they don't need to know anything the client doesn't need to know how to apply a manual underline on something the whole purpose that's of why they hired that. us yeah and mm -hmm. but i think it's so hard to remember that all the knowledge all that you have inside you as a designer that you've cultivated over the years they don't have any of that um but it's so easy to be like well you know x y and z and i think that can be hard to explain the limitations to the client too um this project we did some like fun creative custom stuff Ooh. are there any things on this site that you really loved any features that you built that you were really hyped on really excited about I have one in mind but I want to hear you first of anything that you did that you got to work on that you were really delighted to see in the world oh my gosh I mean, there's, there's a couple that come to mind, but I feel like, like, okay, like the logo that the giant logo is the splashy giant logo that, um, that zooms back, that reduces in size as you scroll. Mm -hmm. I like that on any website. I really like that. Um, but okay, this is going to sound, <laughs> this is going to be like so silly. But I, I loved my little animated underlines, like the, the animated lines on each page. And I, yeah. I feel like it was so simple, but it was a very, that was a very like impromptu decision. So I just thought, I'll just add a little something here. But I ended up really liking that decision a lot. It's so elegant and understated and I think that that was such a for me that was such an indicator of how deeply you had understood to use the parlance of the internet again the brief but like truly thank you for not saying the assignment oh thank you <laughs> I was gonna be like, no, don't say to be it. Honest, like, the brief. I I'm thought like, that's what it was, and I forgot. Now I now remember that it was she understood the assignment. No, we we like we she understood. But the I brief. Forgot. Um, 
no, I think it was such a good, it was such a good example of, oh, Susan really, really gets this project. Mm. The other thing that I was wild about, and this was a day two feature, was this incredible, it is so hard to make a bunch of logos look good on a website. Right. They're always different sizes, different colors. The backgrounds are messed right. up. You don't have, you know. So this is when like clients come to us and they have a series of clients and we need to make yeah. all of their like as seen in moments or like testimony yes. look uniform, yes. but every logo is different. its own identity. Yes. Sorry. And when Here I opened this website for the first time and I saw this elegant, scrolling, monochromatic yet tonal, like rundown of client Ooh. placements, I was absolutely gobsmacked. Like I looked <gasps> at it and I was like, damn, she's good. <laughs> wow. A day two feature. A also. day two feature. Really setting that bar, doing doing the absolute most. <laughs> yes. The most. Wow. most. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. That see, that's that's exactly what you were just talking about, Kelsey, about the about the Grand Canyon of me doing that and thinking like I've seen that on other websites. You know, it was I've seen on so many websites. I was, you know, I'm just so engulfed by that world. I'm constantly looking at websites because I mm. I just like constantly want to like inspire myself and like get better. That yeah. when I did that, it was just like it wasn't even a thought to me. Yeah. So, well, but that's the thing is like, you have that, you come to the table with this creative knowledge that, you know, I think really we're tasked with like sharing with our clients and kind of bringing to their, their, their design process. And I think that that is such a special collaborative part of this. And I think that's where we really hit on that as one of our values as a company is you hear what the client's saying I mean a website that feels clean that takes some like not super visual content and makes it feel elegant and clear and easy to understand but also feels dynamic and then you go ah I've seen this feature in a bunch of different places yet when you tie it into type choice and color palette and all of that that's the, that's the collaborative magic, right? I think that's really, really special. Yes, Kel, it is the magic. Bridging the gap, bridging the crevasse. Bridging the bridging crevasse. The crevasse. <laughs> There's something here. It's like the cru like the, the this metaphor we're using. I like it. We're weaving, you know. We'll maybe and I mean, like this space is we'll tie like, it all together. Yeah, I mean, the reality is that we all like live in this kind of space in between because that's where we have to sort of meet to understand each other. But yeah. again, like Kelsey, you were saying, like, it's our job. This is our job to kind of extrapolate all of this information and regurgitate it back on a page because a client could say elegant animations and to anyone that can mean a whole world of thing, but to a designer who spends a lot of time on websites you'll know what's new, what's exciting, what's different. And you have this, you know, bank of information that you can pull from. And that is why we like working with contractors so much who have had all of this experience is because each of you brings something to the table where you're like, oh, if you use this plugin, try this one. And that's something as a company we're always doing. We're always like looking for like new plugins, new lines of code, things that will make our websites look better, but are easy to, you know, folks might not fully understand why like a plugin is so incredible. It's because you may see it like something extra, but in reality, it's making your website way more workable. I don't know if I'm doing a good job of explaining this, Kels, but essentially like the idea is that you're not like writing all this code yourself. It's not going to break the website. It's actually going to, it's already proven to work really natively with it in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. and you just like have like a wealth of information on that stuff. So you're pulling from expertise, which makes these projects and builds go so much smoother. You have a lot of different options to present to clients. Um, mm -hmm. you know, those yeah. things are, are great. At well, one I point, you did I, a really good job. Oh, go ahead, Susan. Oh, no, I was, I was just going to mention that I, I, at one point I, when I was researching this project, um, 
I found a podcast that Rachel was on. So I listened to it because I really wanted oh, yeah. to just, I, I really wanted the website to um, embody her personality. And I really thought like, okay, I'm going to get really in, you know, really get to know Rachel and make sure that I'm learning everything I can about her in order to make this website as beautiful as possible. And also for her to be really wowed by it. I mean, my goal is I want, I want them to tear up. I don't know if anyone's going to tear up over a website. But I want them to be moved. Yeah. You care. I well, love that. And I, I remember you I saying care. that you watched her podcast and I, or you listened to one and I was like, oh, we're going well, an extra mile. And I, I think the, the idea is that the clients feel seen, right? That, I think that's what we're always trying to get to with our process is that they feel like we have taken a full look at who they are so we can build them a website that's really mm. representative of what mm -hmm. they need. But I remember in that moment, Rachel felt so seen by you, Susan. Like, I think she felt so m moved by the fact that you would take the time to try and understand her before you build the site. And I don't know, I feel like that's such a great example of everything we value as a company tied mm -hmm. up in a little bow. And we're just so happy to have you here. And I yeah. can't wait to see what happens next. I'm yeah. happy to be here too. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Thanks yeah. for joining us, Susan. It's been an absolute delight talking to you. Yes. Um, and great. Well, you can subscribe to No Surprises wherever you get your podcast. You can also find this delightfulness on our YouTube channel. Our website is www.weekofthewebsite.com and give us a follow on Instagram at weekofthewebsite. And next week, we're going to bring our client in from 3PR, Rachel, and talk about it from their point of view. So Amazing. come back and, and join us again. Thanks for joining us, Susan. Thanks, Susan. Thank you for having me. Mm. Crab rangoons for everyone. That's what I want. Hot dips for all. <laughs> <laughs>